What's up guys, in this video we'll be discussing how to build a fine-tuned mobile net model, and we'll be walking through the implementation of this in code using Keras, so let's get to it. Now that we've seen what MobileNet is all about in our last video, let's talk about how we can fine tune the model and use it on another dataset. Now, if you're not already familiar with the concept of fine tuning, that's all right. I have all the other fine tuning videos we've done for the VGG16 model with Keras, as well as the fine tuning concept video all linked in the description. So check those out first if you need to. All right, let's jump right into the code. This is the same Jupyter Notebook as last time, so make sure you have all the imports needed that I highlighted at the top of the notebook then. Similar to what we previously implemented with VGG16, we're going to be fine-tuning MobileNet on images of cats and dogs. The implementation will be pretty similar, but you'll notice there are a few differences. Now, many different breeds of cats and dogs were included in the ImageNet dataset for which MobileNet was originally trained on. So the original model has already learned a lot about cats and dogs in general. And because of this, it won't take much tuning to get the model to perform well on this specific classification task. In an upcoming video, however, we'll be fine tuning MobileNet on a new dataset made up of classes that the model's not already learned about in its original training. So stay tuned for that. Now, before we start tuning the model, we need to prepare the data. The data I'm using is a random subset of cat and dog image data from the Kaggle cat versus dog competition. And I have my image data stored on disk in a specific directory structure in order to make use of Keras flow from directory function that we'll see in just a sec. So if you're going to be following along, then you need to structure your data in the same way, and you can do that by following the video on image preparation for CNNs with Keras. Link in the description. All right, so here we're defining the path variables for where the training, validation, and test sets reside on disk. And then we're creating these directory iterators for each dataset using Keras image data generator dot flow from directory function. This yields batches of image data from the directory that we pass in with our first parameter. Now notice the pre-processing function parameter we're supplying to image data generator. We're setting that equal to keras.applications.mobilenet.preprocess input. So this is going to do the necessary pre-processing on the images obtained from flow from directory. Recall we talked about this exact function in the last video and its role in regards to pre-processing images for MobileNet. All right, so for flow from directory, we're passing in the path to the dataset, the target size for the images, and the batch size we're choosing to use for training. And we do this exact same thing for all three datasets, train, validation, and test. Now for the test batches variable, we're also supplying one additional parameter, shuffle equals false, which causes the test dataset to not be shuffled. I specified this parameter for something we'll be doing with the predictions in a confusion matrix in the next video, so I'll discuss the specific reason for this when we get to that. All right, so the data portion is done. Next, let's move on to modifying the model. We import MobileNet in the same way as we saw in the last video, and I've printed a summary of the model so you can check out the before and after version of the modified model later if you're interested. Next, we're going to grab the output from the sixth to last layer of the original MobileNet and store it in the variable X. We'll be using this to build a new model. This new model will consist of the original MobileNet up to the sixth to last layer. So we're not including the last five layers of the original MobileNet model. Looking at the summary of the original model, we can see that by not including the last five layers, we'll be including everything up to and including this global average pooling layer. And you should note that the amount of layers that you choose to cut off when you're fine tuning a model will vary by each scenario. But I found that just removing the last five layers here works out well for this particular task. So with this setup, we'll be keeping the vast majority of the original MobileNet architecture, which has 88 layers total. All right, so then we append an output layer that we're calling predictions, which will just be a dense layer with two output nodes for cat and dog, and we'll use the softmax activation function. Now we construct the new fine-tuned model, which we're calling model. And note, you can see by this model constructor that this is a model being created with Keras functional API not the sequential API that we've worked with in previous videos. So that's why this format that we're using to create the model may look a little different than what you're used to. 
To build the new model, we create an instance of the model class and specify the inputs to the model to be equal to the input of the original mobile net. And then we define the outputs of the model to be equal to the predictions variable we created directly above. This creates a new model, which is identical to the original mobile net up to the original model's sixth to last layer. We don't have the last five original mobile net layers included, but instead we have a new layer, the output layer we created with two output nodes. You can compare the summary of the new model here with the summary of the original mobile net to verify the differences I just mentioned. Now, we need to choose how many layers we actually want to be trained when we train on cats and dogs. So what we're doing here is freezing the weights of all the layers except for the last five layers in our new model, meaning that only the last five layers of the model will be trained. From the summary, we can see the layers that will be trained include this convolutional layer and everything below. All the weights in the remaining earlier layers will not be updated during training and instead will be saved with the image net weights from the original mobile net. And the number of layers that you choose to retrain is again one of those things that varies by situation. Since the original mobile net model has already generally learned a lot about cats and dogs, we're not really needing to retrain many layers here. Alright, so our new model is now built, tuned, and ready to be trained on cats and dogs. Make sure you've got your model ready for training, and in the next video we'll do that together, and we'll also see how the model holds up to predicting on new unseen images from our test set. Let me know if you've got your fine-tuned mobile net model ready and I'll see you in the next video.